message and thank you for filling in. Give our regards to Kayla. We miss her and uh, love her music, but we understand that <coughs> young mothers are sometimes uh, sleep deprived. <laughs> so today we will look at what we'd rather have and the amount, the amount we God uh, tells us to have. And our scripture is a very familiar story from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 1 to 4. Listen to the word of God. And he, Jesus, looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites and two pennies. So I said, truly I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all. For all these out of their abundance have put in the offering for God. But she out of her poverty put in all the livelihood that she had. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word of the power of your Holy Spirit. The famous story of the widow's might, illustrating what and how we are to give to God. The rich gave generously, and God appreciates that. Out of their wealth, the poor widow gave her all out of her poverty. So Jesus is telling us it isn't the amount we give to God in money, service, time, devotion. It is whether or not it is our all whether or not God is first and foremost in our lives, in our priorities. It may mean you give away all of your money, as this widow did. As St. Francis of Assisi, the most beloved saint of the Catholic Church did, a wealthy young man in Italy who gave away all his wealth to the poor and then went out on the street and begged for them, begged for things he then gave to the beg beggars of the poor. So it may be your money, but it may be your time, devotion, gifts, just your thoughts, your focus, concentration as Jesus instructed us in Matthew 22 37 to 40 Jesus said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments make all the law and the prophets. So we give all our heart, all our mind, all our soul to God, meaning to, to concentrate on Him to focus all the time, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, to have it in reference to God. It's that priority that God's talking about. That in our lives, that is giving our all, the reason that phrase a few years ago I heard of WWJD. What would Jesus do? 
and Christians ask themselves when making a decision or doing something, responding, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And then doing that as a Christian. And that's because Christ is inside believers as the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is right inside us. And that's another way of just pointing us to doing what is God's priority. In, at some point in my life, in the 1990s, a long time ago, <laughs> after a deepening of my faith due to a lot of things, partly Charles Stanley's preaching, Charles Stanley's preaching had a great effect on me in the 90s, with my deepening of my faith, I vowed not to do any academic scholarship that didn't somehow relate to Christianity. And my fields were in several things, history, political theory, a lot of things I could have done. But I felt like the widow's might <clears throat> had to give everything I had in my professional work to God. That if I was asked to write something just completely unrelated to the faith or religion, that I'd turn it down because I wanted to make sure everything I did was somehow related to Christ. Um, it, that is a difficult when you're doing political theory or American political thought. So then right after that, I did a book on James Madison. James Madison's political thought, emphasizing the Christian component to Madisonian theory and our Constitution. So, as we give our all to God, as this widow did, we are to emphasize our life service to God primarily, whatever our work is. We used to say that um, from the scripture. Do all our labor as unto the Lord. We don't just work to make money or to have a position or um, even use our talents. When St. Paul said, do your labor, whatever you do, as unto the Lord, not just your boss, not just your customers, not just your bank account, but do all your work as unto the Lord. That's why that great uh, Puritan, and they're tough, those Puritan, that Puritan work ethic, we used to call it the Protestant work ethic. Work, work, work. Help oh, if you're a German. Uh, work, work, or all they love to work, but we don't need work. But that's partly because from St. Augustine and John Calvin and so on, they said, we will answer to God for the gifts and the time he's given us. It doesn't matter if you're a plumber or a teacher or a lawyer or whatever you do. We will answer to God for how we used our gifts and how we worked. That's why that workmanship in Puritan New England, wow. They didn't just throw up a house and take the money and run. Those things were built. Like the nursing student I knew went to Scotland to study in Edinburgh. There was a town council meeting in the village somewhere in Scotland. And they were having to build a new town hall and there were various proposals. Should we make it out of wood? Should we make it out of brick? And they discussed it and the mayor got up and said, we want to make it out of stone because we want something permanent. You build something, it's permanent, it's well made, but the clothing or a house or a car, anything, you don't just make it to look flashy and sell it. You make sure it works, it's reliable, and it's your reputation and it's your calling to give your all. You don't cut corners, you don't cheat, you don't put out shoddy goods, you don't lie. Professional means you had this code, whether you were a doctor, lawyer, teacher, 
this code we grew up with, and you wouldn't break it any more than you'd, you know, rob somebody, because it was like robbing somebody. And you're robbing God. Cheating on God when you're cheating somebody else. So it isn't that you can't make money and live comfortably, but the whole idea is everything we do is to God first, like that widow giving her all. And we can only do this, my friends, because of God's grace within us, our conscience fortified by God's Spirit. It's not always e easy, even with the best upbringing, it's not always easy to sacrifice and go the extra mile when you can cut corners and, you know, get off early. But you do it because it's right. You do it because you're responsible. And we need God's help to do that. And that's what this Holy Communion you're about to receive represents. Um, this Lord's Supper, Christ's sacrifice for us giving his body and blood to us, taking the penalty for our sin so we have forgiveness and we can be made new and then we can be fortified by God's Holy Spirit and that God will help us and lead us. We can only do these things for God all the time because he is empowering us as we give our all as he wishes. It's this represented in the Lord's Supper that we're about to receive. The only way we can do that, truly do that, for as the Bible says, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So if you have your Holy Communion set, you may pull the top off to get uh, maybe you have to pull the top top off to get the bread. Yes, there's the top to get the bread. Body of Christ, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body. gave thanks and gave it to them as disciples saying, drink from it all of you but this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins thank you Lord Jesus for your sacrifice, your body and blood and that by faith you are in us your body and blood are in us as your spirit. We have forgiveness of our sins and are empowered by our Holy Spirit to live a good life, a Christian life, a decent life, and when we slip and fail, we can always go to you and confess. We receive forgiveness and strengthening. Lord God, that is how we can give our all, because you gave your all. Let's all stay together. Closing in this morning.